Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here. Let's talk Dawn of War 3. I've had the opportunity to fly out to Vancouver this past week and meet with Relic, the talent behind some of the best damn real-time strategy games ever made. Homeworld, Company of Heroes, and of course, Dawn of War. You can expect my full thoughts and opinions on what I had a chance to play later in the month. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the Space Marines, all their units and game mechanics. What will we have at our disposal to ensure the Xenos get what they deserve? Let's get into it. Now, first off, I've already done a deep dive last week, so many of the units that I've already covered, I'm just gonna skip over in this video. You can check that out in the description below. This is all new stuff. Oh, and what you're about to see is of course work in progress as Dawn of War 3 isn't due out until sometime next year. So let's start with base building. Dawn of War 3 is bringing back base building, designed similarly to the original Dawn of War, but with some substantial changes. You start off with a stronghold. This is your primary command post. Don't lose it. You can't rebuild it, and it's the only structure that can build servitors. These are your builder units. Space Marine buildings no longer need to be built within a specific distance around a stronghold or a capture point, like in Dawn of War 1. You're free to call in that barracks or machine cult anywhere you can get a servitor, meaning frontline bases can be easily deployed if necessary to help bolster your front line. It's gonna open up a lot of strategy. Speaking of resources, capture points are making return. Think more like Dawn of War 1 than 2. Each point has a different set of nodes surrounding them, so after capturing a point, you can build upgrade modules on each of the nodes, upping your income. Some capture points are more valuable than others due to the different nodes and the number of nodes attached. The two different nodes represented here are power and requisition points, which are staple resources in Dawn of War. So you won't need to build more power generators anymore. Just take and hold territory is your goal, which makes a bit more sense. Much like past Dawn of War titles, you can upgrade these resource points through research on the nodes themselves, and of course, add a listening post to it to help defend your territory. These add turrets that'll blast away any Xenos that get too close. Now let's get into some of the new units. After seeing the early info releases from Relic, I was a little concerned that the Predator tank, the heavy bolter Space Marines, and air units wouldn't be making an appearance. Thankfully, they're all in for Dawn of War 3. Heavy Bolter Devastator Marines are back, bringing with them small deployment times and then unleashing massive amounts of suppressive fire onto the battlefield. This fire is great for taking down infantry and acts as a slow, keeping troops from closing gaps or retreating. Hell yes for suppressive fire. Last Cannon Devastator Marines are your anti-armor infantry. Their animation has been tweaked to be less of a constant laser and more in line with the lore of 40k firing in blasts. It's nice to see Relic taking a little feedback from the community. As they fire at their target, they do more and more damage, increasing their rate of fire over time. The concept being that once a Space Marine has his sights lined up, he starts hammering that trigger faster and faster. The animation itself makes for a good indication of where damage is being dealt from, and if you're on the receiving end, what you need to do to rectify the situation. The Scouts make a return in two separate units. Both versions are built from the barracks. Both have large view ranges. The classic scout is a stealth unit and a detection unit. He gets upgrades that can arm him with stun grenades and a set of three cluster mines that can be deployed permanently on the battlefield until they go off or the player gets rid of them. The sniper scouts are great for taking down single targets. They're a long range, high damage unit, great for taking down enemy leadership. Good for hit and run tactics inside the fog of war as well. Now let's talk about my favorite subject, armor. The Predator tank comes in two versions, the anti-tank Predator, the Annihilator, rocket a LAS cannon turret. Much like the Devastator infantry, these LAS cans wrap up damage over time. Now my favorite tank, hands down, is the Predator Destructor, with area effect auto cannon. Now keep in mind, vehicles in Dawn of War 3 have location-based damage, so keep the enemy away from the flank of your armor, as hitting the rear will cause extra damage. Speaking of flanking, the Land Speeder is back. This time, the engine can actually handle proper flight. You can actually fly over canyons and debris, making the Land Speeder one of the best later game scouts, and a harasser unit. An optional upgrade swaps out its heavy bolter for a multi-melta for combat against tanks. Remember, flanking enemy armor is a great way to ensure victory. And since the Land Speeder can actually side strafe while firing at a target, and if you take control of it, you can actually take armor down this way. It's pretty impressive. If you find your armor is taking way too much fire and you need to repair it, you can order your servitors to repair your armor much like classic Dawn of War titles, but with a twist. 
your servitor will continue to follow that armor around the battlefield repairing it without the need for the player to micromanage it. This is a much needed addition. Finally, the Whirlwind. Now I've talked about this unit before, but now we get to look at its incredible range. The Whirlwind acts as a Space Marine's primary artillery platform, firing cluster munitions over the battlefield. Now keep in mind it doesn't have a default attack, so picking targets with its barrage is up to the player. A well-placed strike can turn the tide of a battle. Structures for the Space Marines include the basic barracks, allowing the production of scouts, scout snipers, and assault marines. The Doctrine Chapel is where you get your heavy infantry, like your Devastator Marines, the last cannons, or heavy bolters. The Machine Cult is where you build your whirlwinds, land speeders, dreadnoughts, and both Predator tanks. And a new structure called the Arsenal is where you do all your unit upgrades and research, much like the barracks from Dawn of War 1. Dawn of War 3 is a ways out, and it's still under constant development by the Relic team. They're listening to feedback, we've already seen that, so make sure you leave yours in the comments below, and I'll be doing more videos this month as it goes on. I'm going to give you my impressions on what I thought of gameplay later on in the month, and some hands-on time is going on over at Gamescom this month, so if you happen to be in Germany, get a chance to check it out. It should be pretty awesome. Sadly, I'm not going to be there this year. Got too much stuff to do around the house. So, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming, modding, and sci-fi goodness. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Out snipers. Being snipers, they do high damage at long range, making them good at countering setup units like the Dark Reapers. Assault the builds of Dawn of War 3. In the name of the Emperor, you will not falter! You will listen to the Colonel, or he will shoot you in the back of the head, Godsman.